Hello, this is CHM301, Atomic and Molecular Structure and Bonding, Workshop Lecture 4, which is on calculation of the de Broglie wavelength of subatomic particles. I'm Dr. Andrew Tehemicho Oa, a lecturer of physical chemistry in the Department of Chemistry, Benue State University, Mukherdi, Nigeria. This lecture is meant for my third year students as well as other students worldwide who are interested in the questions I tackle on this channel. If you have any questions or any comments, you can send those to me through my university email address or my Google email address. Alternatively, you can leave comments or questions in the comment section of this video on YouTube. Today's lecture is about calculation of the block layer wavelength of subatomic particles. So, after the lecture, I expect you to be able to calculate the de block layer wavelength of subatomic particles. That includes electrons, protons, neutrons, and other subatomic particles. The first question says, estimate the de block layer wavelength of an electron at 500 Kelvin. Having a translational kinetic energy of 8 kBT, where kB is the Boltzmann's constant, T is the temperature. So, uh, what we are going to do firstly is to convert the translational kinetic energy from thermal energy unit to joules. And then use the de Broglie formula to find the wavelength of the electron. So we know that from the question, it says the translational kinetic energy of the electron is 8 kBT um, at 500 Kelvin. And the Boltzmann's constant has this value, 1.38, 1 times 10 to the power of negative 23 to per Kelvin. The temperature is 500 Kelvin. So if we multiply 8, which is already the constant there, by the Boltzmann's constant in temperature, then we are going to have the energy in joules. So that gives 5.5 to 4 times 10 to the power of negative 22. According to de Broglie, the wavelength of a particle when in motion is lambda, lambda represents the wavelength, at the Planck's constant divided by the linear momentum of the particle. So H is the Planck's constant, P is the linear momentum of the particle. But we know that the kinetic energy of the particle is half mv squared. So we can rewrite this as uh, mv, um, or squared divided by 2m, where m is the mass of the particle and b is the velocity of the particle. This translates to p squared all over 2m, where p is the linear momentum of the particle. If we make p the subject of the formula, we are going to have root 2 um, times m times uh, the kinetic energy. We substitute that uh, in the de Broglie formula and it gives us this expression. We obtain the value for the Planck's constant, which is this. The mass of the electron, which is that. And then the kinetic energy, which we obtained previously uh, to be equal to this. When we substitute all of those into the formula, uh, which is this, uh, we obtain, uh, this is the uh, Planck's constant, this is uh, the constant 2 there, this is the mass of the electron, and this is the kinetic energy. So this gives the wavelength as 2.09 times 10 to the power of negative 9 meters. We can write this as 2.09 nanometers. 
Yeah, so here is a self-test question to find out if you actually understood um, how to do the first question. It says, estimate the diplopite wavelength of an electron having a kinetic energy of 3 kilo electron volt and compare the result with the wavelength of x-rays of the same energy. Um, the answers are firstly for the first part, 0 0.22 angstrom. And then the wavelength of the X-rays is about 19 times the typical wavelength of the electron. The second question says, estimate the diplopite wavelength of an electron that has been accelerated from rest through a potential difference of 3.5 mega electron volt. So our strategy, let's take this to be the electron. Uh, this blue circle with negative uh, be the electron. So the potential at the initial point of the electron be negative 3.5 mega electron volt. At the point of that, that let the potential be not mega electron volt, but zero mega electron volt. If this electron is accelerated from this point to that point, of course electrons are moved spontaneously from regions of low potential to those of high potential. So we are going to have a potential difference between the final state and the initial state as uh, delta phi 3.5 mega electron volt. The kinetic energy of the electron at the initial point is going to be zero. However, the electron is going to have what is called the electric potential energy, which is the product of the charge on the electron times the potential energy of the electron at that state. At the final point, the kinetic energy of the electron is not going to be zero. It's going to be half uh, mv squared, where the potential energy, the electric potential energy, would become zero. Overall, from the law of energy conservation, the final Ke is going to be equal to half mv squared, equal to the charge on the electron times the the change in potential uh, within the region the electron has traveled. Uh, you know from the law of conservation of energy, energy can neither be created nor destroyed, but can change from one form to the other. You know that. So, uh, there is a change in potential energy to kinetic energy. So, after the acceleration, all the potential energy, uh, the potential energy difference is converted to kinetic energy. According to Diplock layer, the wavelength of a particle when in motion is um, this lambda equal to Planck's constant divided by the linear momentum. We saw that previously. But we know that the kinetic energy is equal to the, the change in electric potential energy between the two distances traveled by the electron. If we express the kinetic energy as p squared all over 2 and uh, just like in the previous case, and make p the subject of the formula, then we are going to have this expression. If we substitute this for linear momentum there, we are going to have our lambda to be equal to this expression. Our next task is to substitute all the values of this parameter into the formula. Plus constant is that the mass of the electron is this, charge on the electron is this, and the, the potential difference is 3.5 mega electron volt. But we know that one electron volt is equal to 1.6 or 2 times 10 to the power of negative 19 dot. That means we can substitute um, um, this value for the electron volt and mega 
actually is 10 to the power of 6 from our introductory lecture. If you haven't watched that, I encourage you to watch it, Introduction to Physical Chemistry, where I did uh, some units and some decimal places, how to handle them. Uh, for second year students anyway. So that translates to 5.6 times 10 to the power of negative 30 joule. So from this expression, we simply substitute all of those. And that gives this, this is Planck's constant, this is two from there, that is mass of the electron. This is the charge on the electron. This is the potential, the potential difference in, 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 in joule. Um, in potential difference in, in joules, so to say. Now, this evaluates to 1.64 times 10 to the power of negative 3 meter, which we can write as 1.64 millimeters. So, uh, again, this is a self test question to check if you actually understood how to solve question two. It says, estimate the electric potential difference that a proton needs to pass through to have a wavelength of two nanometer. So the answer is 0.205 millivolt. If you enjoy this video, I encourage you to subscribe. Ring the bell so that when I upload new videos, you'll be notified. Like, comment, and share. Thanks for watching. The link to the PDF version of this lecture can be found in the video description. If you have any comments, you can send them to me through my university email address or my Google email address. Alternatively, you can leave comments in the comment section of this video, and I do my very best to attend to them. Bye now.